to reset for the month of May. I am so excited. I said at the beginning of the year I was going to regularly do these videos and I have not done one since January. So it is time to get back on track and do these videos with y'all. I've been doing them kind of on my own without like filming them and they're always my favorite videos to watch on YouTube. One of my favorite YouTubers, Carter Sullivan, started the series of just like doing a monthly reset, kind of talking about goals and what went well in the month and then talking about the month coming forward and I just love watching these types of videos. I'm a very goal oriented person and so just hearing what other people are striving for and like working on just really motivates me and inspires me and so I wanted to do my own and hopefully start doing them more consistently throughout the rest of the year. I just made my matcha. It is my second matcha of the day. I'm usually just a one cup of caffeine kind of person but I figured why not? It'd be fun to sip on this as we are going through what went well in April and what I want to work on in May. And as a lot of y'all know, I'm a runner and a majority of my content kind of focuses on my running. So I thought it'd be really fun just to have a little section kind of talking about the last month of running, how many miles I ran, how I felt, and like if I learned anything, if I'm training for anything like that. So just thought it'd be fun to add in a section just kind of summarizing running. So I'm really excited to dive into that as well. And if you are new here, I didn't even introduce myself, but I am Molly. And like I just said, I am a running content creator here in Austin, Texas. And I am just so excited you're here. We'll start by breaking down the goals that I accomplished in April. And sometimes I walk a fine line between setting goals and then just setting a to-do list. And it's usually a to-do list of something that I've wanted to do for a really long time and have just kept pushing off. And so I feel like a lot of April was kind of leaning more towards the to-do list side. And I'm trying to make sure May is more of like a goal side. I don't think there's anything wrong with like either one of those, but just kind of prefacing, I realized some of these were more like to-do items versus like a bigger overarching goal. So I will review April with y'all, then I will kind of review my month in running with y'all, then I will set my goals and intentions for May with y'all, and then we will end out the video just talking about my favorite products and things from the month of April. So let's get into it. So my first category for goals was health, and as you can see, it was pretty much all, not even pretty much, it was all to-do list items, and that's because I ran a really big race in March, and really just didn't want to set any big goals for the month, month of April. I'm recording this on April 25th, and so I am running a half on April 29th, um, but that is a distance that I'm pretty comfortable with, so I didn't have any big goals or anything like that for that distance, and really just wanted to focus on doing all these to-do items because, y'all, I've been putting all this stuff off for such a long time. We moved to Austin, we moved back to Fort Worth, and then in December we moved back to Austin, and so I really haven't had any of like the doctors or anything like that in Austin that I have needed to and so I was like okay I've put all of this off for such a long time so I finally made a doctor's appointment and I have that appointment in May. I also made my gynecologist appointment which is I definitely went a little over the annual like length that you were supposed to go but I'm revisiting the same one that I saw when we first initially moved to Austin so I'm really happy to have that on my calendar again. I did not make an appointment with my dermatologist because I couldn't remember if it had been a full year or not yet and so I wanted to go back to my emails and try and find who I had last seen and I just didn't get around to trying to track that email and name down so we'll definitely be transferring that over to May. Lastly, scheduled a dentist appointment and saw the dentist. So pretty successful in terms of appointments and making all those appointments that you need to be on top of making and for some reason I am just always so bad at making them so I feel pretty good about that. Next in the categories is finances and if you watch any of these other videos that people do on YouTube a lot of people do like a really deep dive into finances and sometimes I really love listening to other people go through their budget and other times I don't because I feel like it can like 
bring out a lot of comparison or makes you think like, oh, am I doing something wrong with my money? And it's also really vulnerable too, to be that open with your money. So let me know if you want me to share anything more than just finances goal. I don't think I'm going to be as open as some people are here on the internet, which is amazing. I'm all for transparency and whatnot, but also like to keep privacy in that area as well. But if there's something with finances you, you would like me to talk about, let me know because I do really enjoy talking about this kind of stuff. But the first one was to get new car insurance. Um, we had to find a new provider for our insurance and so spent a bunch of time just looking around where we could get it, kind of comparing prices and luckily got it just like two weeks before our other car insurance ended. And unfortunately our price is going up by a fair amount. So going to have to kind of budget things around for that, but I'm happy just to have that done. Wanted to invest leftover tax money, which we also just did that a couple days ago um, because of the way that my LLC is incorporated i knew that we had oversaved because we set aside 30 percent and i kind of assumed we would end up paying only 20 to 25 percent of what we'd saved and luckily was correct i would always advise to oversave rather than undersave because it kind of ends up with like a nice little surprise come tax season you're like oh i saved a little bit extra so um had wanted to make sure we invested that and got it put away so I'm really happy that we did that and happy that we ended up with a little bit extra as well. Also wanted to start paying quarterly taxes. I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't pay quarterly taxes all of last year and I've been an LLC for a long time, but specifically last year I incorporated as an S Corp and didn't pay my quarterly taxes and definitely paid a little fine for not paying them. So this year I am trying to be on top of that. And so I paid my quarterly taxes in April. And lastly, wanted to look into life insurance. I still like don't know too much about it. We previously had some and just kind of like felt like it was a scam. So we ended up, I guess like not getting our money back or like selling it. I don't even know what the right terms would be, but we ended up just like canceling it. Um, and so for the longest time I had just like written it off cause I was like, oh, we have it. And then the more we looked into it and the more I like kind of learned, I was like, wait, this just like feels like they're ripping us off. So we ended up canceling it. And now it's been on my list for a while to figure out what we should do as, you know, young, healthy couple, no kids, like what should we do? What's the best route? So definitely carrying that over to me. For work, I <laughs> clearly was really concerned about me paying quarterly taxes cause you can see that's on there. And I, as y'all know, you know, I did it. Um, and then I also just feel like I haven't had a good routine of how I manage my time between my clients, how I manage my time between my own work. If you don't know, I'm a freelance copywriter and then I also run my own social media channels. And so in the past I've had way more clients than, I'd, than I've had stuff with my own, but as like my own channels have picked up and stuff, I'm just trying to figure out how to best manage my time. And I was really hoping to get into more of like a workflow and routine with everything and just figure out the way I want to manage like my creativity and energy regarding all of that because it can be pretty difficult just to constantly have ideas and think of new ideas and um, all of that regarding content. And I don't really feel like I did a good job of that in April. <laughs> so uh, definitely need it to be thinking about that come May. I feel like this, past week or so I've kind of been figuring out more of a routine and just setting more of like strict deadlines and schedules with myself but wouldn't say I've gotten it down 100% like I wanted to. Okay now let's get into the April running recap. This is going to be so fun. So in the month of April I ran a total of 105 miles and I'm actually pretty surprised that I got up this high but it's also pretty funny too, because when I was training for the ultra, I was running like 60 to 70 miles per week. So it's kind of crazy when you look at what I was doing to what I did in this month's total. And I am 100% happy about it and okay with it. And I am predicting that May will look somewhat similar too. I am still really enjoying running. However, I am really scaling back at the time just because I know come summertime, I will be ramping up again. At the beginning of April, I, <clears throat> what's going on at the beginning of april i was contemplating doing another 50 miler right at the beginning of may so i would be like as once this video is published i would be running a 50 miler in less than a week um so i ran a marathon on a treadmill <laughs> um within i think the first week of april or maybe the second week of april and after that i was like feeling so good and then the week following I was just starting to get like so tired and my energy got low so that's when I like really started to scale back in my running and 
let myself like sleep in more and just focus a lot more on strength training. And so that's kind of why my mileage like really dipped down. After that marathon, I like went up and then my energy just went like, Phew. so I've obviously decided not to do that ultra marathon. It just so that it was getting closer and I was thinking about it. I was like, I really don't feel that excited about it. Um, I know there will obviously be more ultras in the future. And my main thing was like, I want to be excited about it. I want to feel prepared about it. And neither one of those things is it right now. Overall, I felt really good. I felt really good with my mileage. Um, it feels kind of nice to have a month where I can scale back and didn't really have anything that I was really pushing towards. There is still a lot of me that is um, really can't stop thinking about the 50 mile distance. And so I am looking at stuff in August and I think um, my body and my mind will be really grateful that I took these assuming I do the same in May, but like took these two months to really kind of like scale back in comparison to what I had been doing. We'll see what I end up doing. I will share as soon as I figure things out, um, but there's definitely a lot to figure out in terms of like racing and details and stuff. But overall I felt pretty good. I definitely feel like I felt tired and I have no idea if that's because I'm still trying to like fully recover from the ultra distance and everything or is it because I was running less and so then I'm used to running so my body was like what's going on and I didn't have as much energy so I don't know I'm also starting to have just like a little bit of IT band pain it's not freaking me out or anything like that this is like an injury I used to struggle with all the time just as I began running um so I'm going to start seeing a physical therapist just regularly just to make sure I can like get on top of it before I do start ramping up my mileage again, but um, did just have like a little bit of pain in the past few weeks that I have been noticing. I'm so excited. May is my favorite month of the year and not just because it's my birthday month or our anniversary month. Let's start with the health goals again first. Okay, so goal number one, y'all are getting the information, the secret first because I haven't shared it anywhere else yet, but I am running the New York City Marathon and I'm so excited about it. Um, I've been waiting until this half passes just to announce it and everything like that, but I'm running with a nonprofit that I really love and adore and have had the honor of being um, just really closely involved with for several years when I was in Dallas. The organization is called Back on My Feet and they empower people who are experiencing homelessness through the power of running, which is just so incredible, so amazing. They also equip them with like tools and resources that they need to go out and succeed. And so I've seen firsthand how incredible this nonprofit is and I'm just so excited and honored to be able to run with them and fundraise for them. So I have that coming up and one of my goals for May is to fundraise a third of what I will need to fundraise. So I've never done fundraising before. <laughs> I don't know if that is like completely lofty and like way too high of a goal to set, but I'm really hoping to fundraise quickly so I can just focus on the training and everything that it'll take to get in shape for the race come November. But I'm so excited. It'll be my first world major marathon and it's going to be so much fun. And Dom is doing it too. He actually get, got in by the lottery. So it's going to be so much fun to do it together. I just can't wait. My next goal is to do daily mobility for 10 minutes. This is always in the back of my head that I'm like, oh, you need to be better about this. You need to do this. Um, and especially now that I have like a small injury kind of starting to pop up, I really want to be on top of, uh, on top of doing stretches and like mobility exercises and stuff like this. And especially because I know I am starting to see a PT again soon. I know I will have those exercises so I don't have any excuses to not do them. Carried over from April, I need to uh, schedule that derm appointment unless I find out that like I didn't see them until like September or something like that. But I'm pretty sure I saw them sometime in the May, June time period. So it's time for me to schedule that. For finances carried over from April, I want to look into life insurance again. We also want to start implementing a monthly finance meeting. It sounds so official <laughs> um, between me and Dom and just like talk about how we're feeling regarding our money, how we're feeling regarding like our spending, our saving, and if it's in alignment with the life that we want to create. I feel like we both feel a lot more comfortable when we are like openly discussing our feelings in regards to our money and stuff like that. So want to make sure that we are doing that on a monthly basis. Then the third one, more of a like to do item is just to pay myself through like a payroll company that I just like don't always do just because it takes a couple days for the money to like actually hit my account. And sometimes I'm like, no, I want that money now. <laughs> but I technically like have to pay myself through a payroll because of the way that I am like incorporated as an S Corp. So I haven't done that yet all year and I need to like make up for the fact that I haven't done that. So I need to do that in May. For work, also some exciting things going on. I have dreamed of creating a physical product for 
a little over a year and a half now. Like I have dreamed about creating it for such a long time and have never felt like the timing was right or that I had like the right people in my corner to do it. And so I have been working now for, I've had the idea literally for forever um, and have had designs for such a long time. But the past few weeks I have been working so hard and putting a lot of time and thought into the product that I am creating and really want it to be done by like beginning or middle of June. So May is going to be like a grind trying to get it done and I would love to have like a physical sample, like the first sample of it done by the end of the month and I cannot wait to share what I'm creating with y'all. I would also like to secure a new like summer long partnerships. I really prefer just to work with partners um, for multiple months versus just one month because I am really selective with who I am working with and so just like one-off posts don't really, I don't know, just don't feel as genuine to me. I really like showing y'all that like every single partner I work with is genuine but I feel like the longer I work with them the more y'all can see that I am genuinely using and loving the product and so I am hoping it just to get another longer term partner. I would like to upload four new videos to YouTube. I am really trying to be consistent with this platform. This is my favorite platform. I think I've said that before. I really like um, longer form videos. I really like just like being able to like freely talk and share everything and I know when I have spare time I'm usually going to YouTube just to like watch other videos and so I really love this platform and I really want to dedicate more time to it and so that's why I'm hoping to publish four videos this month. We'll see how it goes. And then I would also like to write four blog posts. I feel like blog posts are I love, I still love reading blogs. Like my favorite bloggers I've been reading for 10 years now and there's just something so like like calming or like homey. I don't know. There's just something so great about like reading a blog post, like reading something from your favorite blogger while you're like drinking coffee or like getting like easing into the day. So trying to figure out the direction that I want to take my blog because I want it to be both informative and helpful, but I also just want it to be like another peek into my life and like the things that are going on. So trying to figure out if I want it to be like kind of half running content and the other half is just like random like stream of consciousness because honestly those are my favorite types of blogs to read or just like the random like what's going on in someone's life like kind of how people used to blog like forever ago before SEO even popped into people's minds so we'll see what I end up doing there but I would love to get four blog posts out and then adding a category for me I have some personal goals as well so my first one is to read two books um, I have been slacking a little bit but I have a really long to be read list and so I'm hoping to get through two books. I've also started a list in my Notion um, where I just like have all my like not even not my passwords but just like all the important information of like websites that I need to remember, the username, just stuff like that and I want to finish filling it out with all the information that's like all up here. I need to get it get it into the notion. I want to come up with, I will have to come up with our San Miguel itinerary since that's where we're going at the beginning of May just for our anniversary and want to have some like solid things in, in the itinerary so we, you know, have some things to do but don't have like an entirely packed schedule. I want to better organize our space. I think we're doing better with this but there are definitely some areas that still feel really like cluttered to me and that kind of stresses me out, especially working from home. I just like the way our spaces really affects me. And so I'm really hoping just to organize a little bit better. Maybe that means declutter a little bit more, but yeah, I'm just hoping to get that done in May. And then lastly, I want to do one new fun thing in Austin. I don't even know what this means exactly, but like, I guess something out of the ordinary for us. So maybe like going to a concert or like spending more time at Zilker or just like trying something new. Not like a restaurant or something like that because we eat out so much, but just doing something a little bit out of the ordinary. I think it'd be really fun in May. Okay, time for monthly favorites. I'm so excited. I always love hearing what people are enjoying. So I'm really excited to share these three things with y'all. And they are very random. <laughs> First thing is running related though. And it's the Nike Invincible 3s. I think I started running in them at the beginning of April or like yeah, at the beginning of April, because I know I ran the marathon in these. At least I'm pretty sure I ran the marathon in these. I would have to go back and look at the videos, but I'm obsessed with them. I have a full review on my Instagram, so I won't dive like too deep into details or anything like that, but I'll link the review um, down below, but I love them. They are like perfectly cushiony. They're so cute, and yeah, they're definitely one of my favorite pairs of running shoes that I own now. Okay, the second one is this CEO glow from Sunday Riley. I don't know if you 
Um, this is what it looks like. It literally smells so good. And I feel like a lot of vitamin C serums do not smell good. So every time I put on my face, I'm like, oh my gosh, this smells amazing. And it literally is so moisturizing. I am obsessed with it. I got the mini bottle because I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. And I've actually never bought anything from Sunday Riley before. I love it. It might be one of my new favorite vitamin C serums and I have tried a lot of vitamin C serums. It's super hydrating. It doesn't leave your face feeling greasy and you only need a little to cover like your entire face. So I feel like it, you get a lot of bang for your buck. I absolutely love it. The last one is kind of random and I've been using for longer than a month, but since I have not talked about it, I just feel like I have to share about it because I tell everyone about them. They're so good, but they're these pins. They're the Muji. I don't know if that's focusing, but they're the Muji like black ink ballpoint pens. It's the 0.38 millimeter. They're the best pens that I have ever written with. I love writing with them. Like I don't think I will ever write with anything else. I have like ordered them in bulk because they are so good. It's like a perfectly, oh my gosh, they're so good. It's like perfectly pointy, not too rough, not too smooth. If you're a pen person you absolutely need to try these pens okay and that's all i have for this monthly reset i hope you enjoyed let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to add or take away from this video since this is pretty much the first one i've ever done like this besides my like new year reset um i would love to hear what you think of it and just if you have any ideas or anything else you would like me to add i am all ears and just love hearing what y'all think of these videos so thank you so much for watching and i will see y'all next time